I've launched Adobe Bridge and I'm in my Kelly workspace and I've got two shots that I really absolutely love and I've already done the color correction on them. But unfortunately in this shot, little brother has his behind in the photo, taking away from the beautiful little girl. So what we're going to do is double click on it. Since it was originally shot in a raw format, CR2, Double click automatically opens the Adobe Camera Raw. And in Adobe Camera Raw, you have a crop tool. And when I draw this crop, I'm using visually the rule of thirds, trying to imagine that there's a guide here and here, here and here, dividing this image up into nine equal slices so that the most compelling or interesting portion of the photo the child's face is at the intersection of two grid lines. In fact, on the crop tool, they have saved or preset ratios, one to one meaning actual size, which is the default, but you can crop at a two by three ratio, three to four, and it will constrain you to those dimensions. I'm gonna leave it on normal, and after drawing the area of the image I'd like to keep, I will hit FX for effects over in all of these Adobe Camera Raw settings, that's where the post crop vignetting is contained. If I take post crop vignetting and slide the amount to the left, there you could see a very cool photographer's trick called burning the corners with this bit of darkness that has a roundness to it and a feather to it. I can feather less, and you'll see a hard edge for a special effect like a spotlight. I could feather more and see how it blends more towards those edges. In fact, in outdoor shots, sometimes the light can cause darker corners, which may not be pleasing because you want even tones all the way around. You could actually do the opposite in post crop vignetting, which is to lighten up the corners. And in fact, this is another nice special effect. If I do want kind of an ethereal glow all the way around the outside, I could use a positive post crop vignette. Post crop just means after it's been cropped, apply this blend to the edge. I can also change where it occurs, more towards the center or more towards the edge of the photo. Since her face exists at the edge, I don't want my midpoint too low. I want it pretty far out, closer to the actual edge of the photo. And then finally, I do have a lot of highlights here in the corner. So they have some settings that will help you preserve those. You could see it mostly here. If you watch these two corners, as I go down to zero, it lets it burn or darken the corners a bit more. As I slide it up, it's preserving more of that highlight. In this case, I don't need to slide that up, but it is something to experiment with. Then I can choose Open Image and do any other correction work I want to for this, or simply save it so I can go get it printed. I'll do File, Save As, and this is a corrected one. So I usually add CX on the end to know that I've done my retouching. And I'll save that on my desktop, and I'll take a look where I'm saving it, and I've built a corrected images folder. And I'll save it right there. And then back to Bridge. So you could see that on this shot, not only have I color corrected it by this icon, but I've cropped it in a camera raw. And since Camera Raw never overwrites the original, if you decide to change that crop amount or reverse this to be the white cropped edge, all you do is double click. Here's Camera Raw again. I'll go to Effects and I'll try the opposite style. And a bit more feather. And I'll move it closer to the inside. Really neat special effect. I'll hit Open Image again. I'll do a Save As again. And this one, I'll add white to the end. Just naming files in a way that I understand what's happened. 
Command D will jump me to my desktop where you could typically hit desktop on the left. I'll go into my corrected images folder and hit save. I hope you've seen in this recording all the wonderful things you could do with Adobe Camera Raw's crop tool. You can use the Camera Raw and Crop Tool features not only on things initially shot in RAW, but on your JPEGs and TIFFs as well. So take some time, experiment with the dials and settings there in the effects portion of the Adobe Camera Raw dialog.